smacked down. And now he's just kind of, you know, now started to climb again. But, I mean, he was on the road to being probably one of the biggest. Right. And yesterday's sins are today's successes. You know what I mean? Uh, in, in retrospect, you have to forgive him and say, you know what? I messed up. I learned the lesson. And, you know, hey, I want a new start. And is that what you gather from you guys opening your arms up to that secret speaker? Absolutely. You know, I, I believe that he's absolutely genuine. I mean, he, he likes to have fun. He does pranks. I mean, that's what he is. He's a content creator. He does all sorts of things. He's not in a box. He'll do whatever he wants. If he wants to take a trip to Antarctica, he'll document the whole thing. He's got the resources. He's got the teams to do it. Sure. Um, I just, I really enjoy getting to know him and his team and, and dealing with his assistant and just the whole process. They've been amazing. They follow through on their word every which way. And what I want to say is there might be rumors, you know, People were saying, oh, it's going to be an A-list celebrity. I never said that. What I said was this person has millions and millions of fans. Now, I had speakers left, right, and center contacting me because we had a little bit of a talk about this. Sure. And I said to Jaron, David Weiss, I said, did I ever say it was an A-list celebrity? They said, no, you never did. The only clues I said was it was a guy. And I think it was Jaron that got that out. He said, we can say a guy or a girl. And I said, guy. And David Weiss got it back. He asked what, what ethnicity he was. And I said, so I was kind of giving a little bit more clues, right. but I was telling people, whoa, when they were going Will Smith and like Robbie Downey Jr., it's like, I'm like, tone it down, man. <laughs> I never once said Hollywood. And why in the world would I want to hype something? If I was going to do that, why wouldn't I hype it two weeks before the conference? Sure. So me keeping a tight... Keep your thoughts about what transpired yesterday. Well, I'm open, like, I'm transparent in any question that people want to have. I think a lot of people were fearful that Logan was coming here to troll it, to make us look like idiots. Sure. What they didn't understand is there was a lot of stuff that was going on behind the scenes. And I had very good discernment. And the fact that Logan's best friend that lives with him in L.A. Right. was a flat earther. He right. brought Logan here. That's a blessing. The fact that, you know, there was rumor that they were just coming here and walking on the red carpet. They paid for their ticket. That's the reason that I reached out to them in the first place. They were all on to support it. Sure. So normally these sure. kind of type people, they just say, hey, I want VIP or I want media. They paid for all the tickets, right? So there were a lot of stuff that people didn't know. I was keeping it very tight-lipped, but people assumed things and stuff. And and it's it's very true. Logan Paul did something that it was really bad, like about a year, year and a half ago. And um, many people will know what, what that video was about. But like, what you know, I was talking to him. He's like, man, I messed up like that. Like, and he knows it's going to take 10, 15 years to kind of restore that because you don't just come back by saying sorry. He knows it's a long road to recovery, but he knows he's he's. Uh, donated a lot of money to uh, suicide awareness and all these sort of things. So what I'm saying is he messed up. He's a young guy. He got caught up in the YouTube fame, doing crazier and crazier things. Boom, something happened. He's like, man, you know, when I look at it in retrospect, I went way too far. But I'll tell you, man, Logan's the real deal. He's transparent. Sure. He's genuine. And he won't he won't let anyone tell him what he can't look at or what he can't speak about. So in other words, and I get it, that, that video that was uh, on, it was very controversial about the suicide, you know, of yeah. promoting suicide and and, uh, they laughed, they laughed, they, they came across someone, you know, they were filming and stuff, but they came across someone and they kind of started laughing a little bit, there was, there was a bunch of guys and stuff, it just got kind of weird, right? But that, that's the story that, uh, you know, it blew up. And again, YouTube penalized them, they knocked him down, the media, I mean, he really, and they took a hiatus, I mean, he literally got, like, smacked down, and now he's just kind of, you know, now starting to climb again, but, I mean, he was on the road to being probably one of the biggest. Right, and yesterday's sins are today's successes, you know what I mean, uh, and, in retrospect, you have to forgive him and say, you know what, I messed up, I learned the lesson, and, you know, hey, I want a new start. And is that what you gather from you guys opening your arms up to that secret speaker? Absolutely. You know, I, I believe that he's absolutely genuine. I mean, he, he likes to have fun. He does pranks. I mean, that's what he is. He's a content creator. He does all sorts of things. He's not in a box. He'll do whatever he wants. If he wants to take a trip to Antarctica, he'll document the whole thing. He's got the resources. He's got the teams to do it. Sure. Um, I just, I really enjoy getting to know him and his team and dealing with his assistant and just the whole process. They've been amazing. They follow through on their word every which way. And what I want to say is there might be rumors, you know, people were saying, oh, it's going to be an A-list celebrity. I never said that. What I said was this person has millions and millions of fans. Now, I had speakers left, right, and center contacting me because we had a little bit of a talk about this. Sure. And I said to Jaron, David Weiss, I said, did I ever say it was an A-list celebrity? They said, no, you never did. The only clues I said was it was a guy. And I think it was Jaron that got that out. And he said, we can say a guy or a girl. And I said, guy. And David Weiss got it back. He asked what, what ethnicity he was. And I said, so I was kind of giving a little bit more clues. Right. But I was telling people, whoa, when they were going Will Smith and like Robbie Downey Jr., it's so like, I'm like, tone it down, man. <laughs> I never once said Hollywood. And why in the world would I want to hype something? If I was going to do that, why wouldn't I hype it two weeks before the conference? Sure. So me keeping a tight lip, and I would never want to jeopardize or harm the community in any way. Right. And honestly, lying 
that I'm seeing going around saying I, it's an A-list celeb from Hollywood. Find anywhere where I went on the record saying that. And all the speakers here can vouch for the fact that they were trying to get information on me. And I just said, listen, all the only clue you're getting is this guy has millions and millions of fans, which he does. And he's got like 17 million subscribers. That's yeah. Like Patricia, Patricia, Patricia Steer uh, just 18, said yesterday. Yeah. But again, if you if you take the combined social media, he's got 57 point something million, I believe. It's over 50 million. Wow. Twitter, Facebook, you mean, he's, he's an incredibly powerful voice and he has a lot of influence. And when I was talking to Logan, I had the opportunity to do about a half hour interview in my room. Right. It was amazing. I have it documented. I'm going to probably put it up. I had witnesses there and they were blown away. They're like, wow. Like, you couldn't spin it. You couldn't even take a sound clip and make it, you know, it was genuine. You know, he was talking about his best friend, and he's like, my best friend's been showing me on the plane, and it was genuine. And I think right now, there was a lot of hype and buildup. Oh, my goodness, Robbie's making the worst decision. This is awful. He's the, they just saw him on stage saying what he said, and already people come up saying, that was brilliant. Like, there was nothing. And he had the opportunity to go crazy. He could have gone crazy. You guys are the biggest idiots, and, you know, live in front of, you know, the whole world, live streamed on YouTube. He could have done it if he was here to do a hit piece. Why in the world would he want to make his best friend that lives with him in his house in Hollywood Look like an idiot. It doesn't make sense. But no one knew these facts. They just started thinking, well, this is what he does on YouTube. But they don't know about his journey of discovering truth when it comes to the reality of this world. Is he a flat earther now? Well, you didn't catch the speech. But he just said, I'm really close to possibly coming out of the flat earth closet. So, no, he's not a flat earther at this point. But he's incredibly close. He's, you know... He's wrestling with it, and his best friend's a flat earther. And, and this is his roommate, as I understand it. Is that correct? It's his best friend. I asked it's him. I said, friend. is this a buddy? I was like, this is my best friend. He lives with me right. in my house in L.A. Right. I'm like, okay. Right there told me that there's no way that he is going to make his best friend look like an idiot right. on his channel. Right. So, again, a lot of people didn't know these facts. They, they thought all of a sudden, you know, I'm going to pop them, give them bread. You know, there was rumors about the fact that, you know, I paid for his hotel, I paid for his flights. They paid everything, not to mention they paid for the tickets. When I when I gave the opening speech, the only reason that we kind of connected the way we did is I was looking at the tickets, and it came in. I'm like, wait a minute, what? I looked at the email, and I'm like, that was an official email. I'm like, no way. And it had a phone number, because when you buy tickets sometimes with PayPal, it's got a phone number. Sure. Contact your phone. Me? And listen to the story, because almost I didn't get a hold of him, because his assistant's the gatekeeper. Right, right. She's like, there's no one here by that name. And all of a sudden, she's like, wait, wait, wait what's this regarding? I go, tickets. She goes, tickets for what? Flat Earth International Conference, she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, and she explained that she's, you know, that she protects Logan that way. And it was a really neat experience, but they followed through, they were transparent, they gave me assurances, there was just things going on in the background that these guys wanted to support it. They didn't want the hype, because they said they wanted to focus on your conference, they didn't want to take it off all on Logan Paul. They were respectful, even. I mean, that's amazing that he, he didn't even want all the hype around it to be announced, you know, a week before. He's like, I don't want the focus of what you guys are doing all on me. So the guy, the guy was really respectful. The team was really, really amazing. Is that the reason why you guys kind of kept it under wraps? Well, they had asked me to, and, and I'm a well, man of my respect word. That well, I'm a man of my word, and I've had speakers come up and they're like, oh, dude, I'm impressed, man. You didn't tell anyone. I said, my wife and I are the only ones that know. And I'll tell you, man, they were calling. They were trying all techniques. They were coming at me. I mean, I had people saying, like, if I'm flying here and I die, just tell me, just, so, just before I die. Like, they were being creative and stuff, but I didn't say anything. The biggest clues I said was, it was a man, and then, you know, He's white. Well, it looks like we've rebounded a lot because, you know, the, the conference started off with some dissension, and, and I think it was heart-wrenching for these guys for, to experience that. But hey, this seems like a grand slam home run to you guys. And it seems like for us as a community, as Flat Earth Truth, is that a, a, a movement? It's a collective, you know, and I think people are waking up to the lies and the deceptions in uh, the, what we were taught and what we were told to think and how to think. and. And uh, anyway, any, Ed, uh, do you agree with that as far as you guys have really rebounded big time on the second day? I just hope everybody, the oh, awareness absolutely. of the positive yeah. vibes yeah. continues and the love that everybody yeah. spreads. I would, I would, I would continue would, that for it. Yeah, and I would have just wished that Mark had just come to me before he made a decision. And he would have seen the way I went. And I have told multiple speakers that if he had said, look, I don't feel comfortable with him going on stage, quite honestly, I would have said, Logan, no, we're talking to work this year. Because he just said, hey, if you have time. I'd love to come up for five minutes to say thank you. And, you know, and I'm like, okay, so it wasn't like, oh my goodness, it's going to kill the show. So going on record, if it came down to losing Mark Sargent, mm -hmm. I would have basically said, Logan, we can't do it. We don't have the time. Maybe next year, right. you know, Mark stay. Right. You know, even though, like I said, I would go on the record. I've already basically talked to Logan. He's willing to talk to Mark at some point. Again, he did something awful. Like it was no doubt awful. And again, he's paying the price for it. And 
Well, we must forgive him for it. I mean, we all That's messed up early in our life. As long as he comes clean, it's to suggest guy. that, you know. And truly, and truly, he just got caught up in it, man. But uh, we we all make mistakes. Absolutely. And he's willing to have open arms and say, man, you know, I messed up, man. I really did. I'll never do that again. Right. Learn from your mistakes, right? So, yeah, there's no excuse for what he did. Absolutely. But he's trying his best to hopefully in the next 10, 15, 20 years restore, you know, his his image of who he was. But I'll tell you, I mean, he's. You know, got a lot of influence. There's a lot of people that love what he does. Yeah, I agree with him because we got to forgive him if he wants a new start and if he's close to being a flattery truth. But what better bring all these millennials in because it's got what 18 million subscribers. Yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. You want to add anything? I was to, just going to uh, ask who's going to fill the spot for Mark Sargent. So Irulan Dushi's on right now because um, Mark was going to be opening it and, and doing the the Q and A. So Irulan Dushi and who's filling Euro Landucci's spot is going to be Marty Leeds, which is really exciting. I Marty's, saw Marty yesterday. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, so Marty's, Marty's a great guy. Marty's going to be able to be up, which is awesome, because Marty and I, through this whole process, we just haven't been able to connect. So I'm really happy to start to get to know him yeah. and stuff, because, you know, a lot of times in this community, they, they think, like, oh, how come Robbie hasn't reached out to me? And I'm going to go on the record, reach out to me. I just, there's so much stuff going on. Reach out to me. Let's get to each other. Sure. And again, I don't care if I agree or disagree. <laughs> this is not about that. We all come together as a collective. Absolutely. We all have varying you know, differences. But the one thing we all agree on is that we're not a small flying through space. That's correct. That's we have to unify on. And we got to stop the paranoia. Like we, we get so caught up in like, oh my goodness, hit, you know, people are going to you know, do all these hit pieces or they're going to make us look stupid. I'll tell you one thing. What do we have to fear when we have truth on our side? Nothing. What, what, is, what does it say in the Bible? The, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And I think you guys need to open up. I think hopefully you guys can mend fences. And oh, yeah. I think when you're, when you're not being reasonable and you think it's so emotionally as it happened, yeah. you, you I, may, I just, probably made an irrational I'm sure. I love Mark. Like, I love Mark. I've been the biggest defender of Mark. I mean, he's an amazing guy. I mean, the, yes, the amount yes. of attack that him and Patricia, yeah. you know, it's disgusting. And I've stood up yeah. so many times. And I'm still signing up for Mark right now. He's an amazing guy. He's genuine. He is who he says he is. Hopefully he does reach out to me. I've left a message. I've reached out to him. I would love just to talk, right? But it's going to be a series of steps. Right? But absolutely, I would love nothing more. Reconciliation, man, whatever, water under the bridge, right? All's for the let's go. But I probably won't want assurances in the future. Can we have an agreement, and maybe we'll do it publicly, that no matter what happens, you have concerns, you're upset, you're mad, you come to me before you just get on a plane and leave. Right. I just, right. Heard, I just heard from, I just heard from uh, Rick Lotech. He had an interview with Mark Sargent today, and he said on the record that Mark Sargent said, that Logan Paul's a shell. That was his quote. Yeah, well, he called him a troll to me. But, you know, we use the terminology of what a show, what a shill or troll is. I mean, for that matter, I've been called a shill. We all shills, you're a shill, we all shills. I mean, well, you know, at that point, it's kind of going in one ear out the other. Yeah. You know I mean? Everyone's going to know. The video will be released in around two right. weeks. He said, all the editing is stuff. It works ahead. In two weeks, everyone's going to know. So mm -hmm. stick your cap, you know, place your bets if you need to. But again, who's going to be vindicated? Right. All I'm saying is I would never ever do anything to jeopardize or try to harm the community. So hopefully at some point that will gain respect and trust for me even further. But like, man, that they did it, they did it well. And I think Logan's going to do an incredible piece of it reach millions and millions of people. And I think it's a learning experience for you guys to kind of like damage control because in the future if you ever have a secret guest that, hey guys, if you don't like what we have coming on, Let's go in the meeting room at this meeting room and we'll talk about it. Yeah, I think, I think so we're good. always learning each and every day. As all well. the speakers could have came together. We could have maybe even had like all people weighing in, pros and cons. At the end of the day, though, I'm going to make that decision. Sure. And I have a track record thus far with many people in the community that I follow through. I'm a man of my word. And that's the one thing that I have. Yeah. I don't have my word. you know. So to me, it's important to have integrity, to be honest, to be genuine. I am transparent. I'm an open book. Ask me any question you need to ask. Because again, I'm here, I'm legit, and I'm wanting to do some amazing things with the community because we're on to something huge. Uh, tell us about, a little bit about your book. I just released my very, very first book, Scientism Exposed, a couple of months ago. Really exciting. I had done the movies, Scientism Exposed, one and two, uh, with my YouTube channel, Celebrate Truth. Uh, it was exciting to reach 120,000 subs before the conference, which was really exciting to get that uh, landmark and stuff, but it's been really amazing. Cause like, well, I'm going to have to shake his hand because he's an author too with both authors now. Love it. Yeah. I, have nothing, I have nothing more than re like respect, man, when it comes to writing books. I mean, I was filmmaking and doing documentaries, but I'll tell you, man, I respect authors even more. I always had a healthy respect, but I'm like, putting together a book, that's a lot of work. It's an amazing aura of just accomplishment. You know, my book, Flash Truth, has been so in 71 countries. Wow. And, uh, it's it's going pretty good, you know yeah. what I mean? But, uh, anyway, uh, how do we get in touch with you? If we do want to get in touch with 
Mr. Robbie Davidson. Just reach out to me on uh, Celebrate Truth. I have uh, I Celebrate Truth at gmail.com. That's uh, my YouTube channel. Um, I'm very easy to find. I'm on Facebook. I mean, eventually you'll connect with me. Like I said, it doesn't take very long to locate me. Just sure. know that I'm busy and it might take a while to get back. But obviously, I mean, find someone to connect if it's really serious. But I'm really busy. But I'm definitely willing to sit down with people if they really have some serious problems. But I'm just going on the record saying, just trust me, Matt. You know, already I've done three conferences. You know what I mean? People were, I mean, here was the thing. Before the biggest, I mean, it was the uproar. I was a scam artist. Everyone's money, and it would be conference. And in all honesty, it was huge. And I said to Patricia, I said to other people, I said, you know what? I don't know if they're going to eat crow afterwards, but you know, they'll see. I followed through, they were all like quiet. Whatever, all the things that have come against me, the people that have railed against me, find fault. What have I done wrong? And when it came to this decision with Logan, I'm going to ask everyone, what have I done wrong? Because again, anyone's welcome here, regardless of your past. If you don't break the rules, you're welcome. And because they paid for their tickets, why in the world would I kick them out? Right. No, I understand. Well, that's like me kicking out the media. Absolutely. All BBC, they did hit piece, get out. You know, right. I can't be doing that. I'm I open to all media, and I think it's important. I'm a big believer in all media is good media. And they understand that, oh, oh, hopefully they do an amazing piece. Not that all media are going to do. They're going to be all sorts of angles. But people are so scared that, you know, understand, it's amazing that there's this much media covering this topic. They just, I don't know, they just get so paranoid when it comes to, oh, my goodness, they're going to make us look like idiots. My story, I'm putting on international flat earth conferences, I run a really large YouTube channel, written a book, done documentary films, and the first thing I came to was a video mocking and making fun of flat earth. Right. Look what happened. So I'm case in point, because somebody going out there making it look absolutely ridiculous, slamming the bottle, making Christians look like lunatics, and flat earth make them looking you know, crazy, God used that. Right. Amen. Don't touch me. I mean, it's crazy <laughs> to think that an atheist, God used it, he humbled me. He used basically an atheist mocking and laughing at the literal nature of the Bible to humble me. I mean, that's powerful. I'm willing to suggest that flat earth truthers have brought more people to God in the truth, wisdom of the Bible and God than all these churches combined. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to bet that. You've had over one billion hits on Google for flat earth. Not million, billion. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. No, it's incredible. And like I said, while Google... And while the search engines, they try to basically censor us and keep us, you know, hidden in the search results, we need people like Logan Pauls to step forward, put their name on the line, and say, hey, to 18 million people in one shot, maybe you should look at that moon landing thing. I, I don't think I'm buying it anymore. Start there. It doesn't have to come out. I say, you don't have to come out as a full-fledged, the earth is flat. You get 18 million yeah. people starting to question the moon landing, man, they're going to find exactly what we found. Absolutely. My last question to you is this. A lot of innuendo and rumors going around that YouTube is going to close everybody down. Okay. I mean, they're just going to pull the rug on it. It's already starting. I think they let too much of the truth out of their poisonous balloon. And uh, what's the contingency plan in the event that that does happen to you guys? Well, I mean, eventually, yeah, they're, they're getting to that point. But what I will say is, you know, you tread on different uh, yeah, topics that can get you in hot water really quickly. Now, you can fight the system, but you're going to lose. Mm -hmm. YouTube's very powerful, and once they yeah, kill you, you're yeah, yeah, So there's certain, like, trigger areas. For example, <clears throat> you start talking about the Jews and railing against them, your channel's probably going to be shut down. Oh, also, if you start true. saying that, like, no one dies, it's Sandy Hook, and all these sort of things. What I'm saying yeah. is truth is important, but if there's lots of people speaking on that and being brave, if you're called to talk about the reality of Earth and the cosmos, mm -hmm. go in that direction. You don't need to talk about everything, because other people are covering that. You know, centralize in what you specialize and what you're really good at. What I'm saying is because so far with Flat Earth, and I know this firsthand, no one's really getting censored with Flat Earth. They might see a video, oh, they took it down because Flat Earth. I can tell you quite honestly that's not happening when it comes to Flat Earth yet. It might, but right now they're going against hate crime and stuff like that. Flat Earth is just fake news. They're just trying to bury it, but they're definitely not taking anyone's channel down. I think they made several mistakes mistakes concerning Flat Earth. Obviously, I think they've let too much of it out of the blue. Maybe it's at a point where it's uncontrollable, where they're not even worried about it as much. Sure, that be a sure but, they're all, but they're also, I mean, you have to understand, they're a corporation, they're monetizing, they're making some serious money off Flat Earth. And if they're going to entertain all these other conspiracy theories, and they look at it as just another conspiracy theory, and they can make millions of dollars off it, they're going to go that direction as well. So understand that unless something violates the community standards, like it's a hate crime, or it's, you know, at that point, they're going to step up. So what I'm saying is, just decide, is it worth the risk? If you really, your number one goal and mission is to reveal the Flat Earth truth, why bring in, you know, Sandy Hook? Why 
bring in Jews or evil and they're going to like whatever. I was like, why do that when all of a sudden you know that pretty much you're just going to lose your eyes. You're going to build it up and then it's just going to disappear. Well, that's what happened to Alex Jones with the uh, Sandy Hook. Absolutely. And regardless of how you feel about Alex Jones, I mean, I was saddened by that. That's an absolutely horrific thing what happened because what that says is they take him out. It's just a matter of about to trickle down. And while they're saying, you know, Alex Jones is a show, we always, we always have a very problem. We have a big problem with people that are bigger than us. We're all suspicious of these people. Well, how did they get that mess big? And, you know, what I'm saying is we all are capable of doing the same thing. And while people are looking and they're all suspicious, he's a troll. Notice that basically I'm being called a troll from channels that are smaller than me. Most times, the biggest people that are screaming off, they're the ones with like 100 subscribers. And they're screaming at the channels with like 10 or 15,000 subscribers. You never see massive channels really, you know, against a small channel. So right. what I'm saying is we all have the tendency to do it. I got caught up in it as well. Like, I'm like, yeah, but what's up with that, Alex Jones? Because he's so big. So we all do it. So we have to kind of just, we have to learn from that and go, well, wait a minute. Maybe we're doing that even with our, our own community. Let's see the actions. Let's see their follow through. Let's see if they're people of their word. Yeah, wow. Biggest thing, and this comes down to the conference. The most important thing with the conference is meet people in person. Build up those friendships and those relationships because this is where it takes it to the next level. And I knew that when it came to Raleigh, North Carolina, that once you take it off YouTube and social media and you move it into a building, it now becomes real to the world, to the media. Wait a minute. They're, they're not just online. They're actually, I want to see what they're like. I want to meet them. And then when they find out that we're so diverse, we're all different, what's going on? Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a fad, but then all of a sudden now we're on the second annual for the United States. This isn't going away. This is growing. People are curious. The angles start going a little bit different. Like, what is going on? How can so many people believe that the earth is, you know, flat in 2018? This is nuts. And I said the same thing. So they're, I think they're curious. They're like, what is going on? And you can't just, when they start, you know, interviewing the community, like, there's some intelligent people here. Right. And when we're saying, hey, we're open to debates, Q&A, ask us, they're like, wow, like, they're not scared of anything. Look, you know, so I just say come with an open mind and it's not about whether you believe it or not, the fact that you're willing just to say, Oh, I'll look into it. I'm willing just to, you know, hear it out. Again, you're gonna get railed on just as much as if you came on Cinema Flat Earth and many people have experienced that just saying, I just wanna look into it. Rob Skiba, I mean he got this completely decimated for saying, Dude, I'm not even a flat earther. He went over and over saying he's not a flat earther. I just been looking into it. And I mean it almost cost him, you know, leaving YouTube and leaving ministry. Right, his his partner too, it's splinter you know, his yeah, partner. Yeah, yeah. Any final thoughts? What's uh give us some future dates with the FBI conference. Sure. The next twelve months. Could you do that? Sure. Yeah, I'll be announcing both uh, Canada and USA for twenty nineteen at at the end of today. So I'll be announcing the locations, the dates and is this secretly filed? You can't tell us at this point. I can't tell you at this point. You're going to have to wait till the end of the day, and I'll be releasing the information. But yeah, the, the venues are set. Cities are set. I think people are going to be really excited to hear the destinations. All right, before I, before I let you go, listen, here, everybody at FlatEarthRadioLive.com, Shelly, Renee, Rick Lotech, Russ, Gilmai, everybody appreciates uh, the time that you've given us. And uh, I would like you to give us a shout-out, though, Flatter uh, this is uh, Robbie Davidson. At, you listen to FlatEarthRadioLive.com. Could you do that? FlatEarthRadio.com. This is Robbie Davidson with Celebrate Truth. You're listening live on FlatEarthRadio.com. All right, man. That's awesome, man. God bless you. God bless you. This is Mark Hollander from Denver. We'll be back. Thank you. Speaking position, okay. uh, position three. but they also was a surprise guest. Okay, three, two, one, go. Good evening, Mark Hollander here, reporting from FlatEarthRadioLive.com, and just got news out that Mark Sargent has left the convention. He's no longer a part of the convention. Um, he seemingly he was upset this morning in our earlier interview, and um, the surprise guest was kind of 
I, it was it was prepared. It was very prepared. It was done a couple of weeks back, and everybody they kept everybody in the dark. And so when he found out who the surprise guest was, and the fact that he was given a speaking engagement, um, you know, as part of the upper echelon group that was the, all the speakers, uh, it upset him pretty much, you know. And I think he was nice enough to give me an interview. Uh, he was candid. He seemed honest about it. And, you know, I took him at his word and, and obviously taking him at his word was probably the correct assumption because uh, he is no longer here in Denver. Uh, he went back home. And uh, so that's just uh, the work. The news is out. He's completely gone. And of course, the, the, the narrative here was that he was not in favor of that speech. I believe his name was Lo 